Okay, lest you folks think that this is just a piece of clickbait, please keep in mind that I very seldom report on anything that might be extraterrestrial technology unless we have observable data that scientists have had an opportunity to review. In other words, I don't point to unexplained encounters with military aircraft or anecdotal stories or photographs, no matter how clever they may be. We need a lot more tangible data before I'm going to report on anything that might involve aliens. That being the case, recently an interstellar meteor collided with the Earth, striking the ocean, and it was reported as being an interstellar meteor by Dr. Abraham Loeb. And yeah, here we go again, the Harvard astrophysicist who believes in aliens. But this guy also doesn't report on things unless there's a lot of scientific data to back him up. And what he had to say about this object is very interesting, and it's backed up by the U.S. Space Force. Hello, YouTube. I'm the Angry Astronaut, and this is... Way back in 2014, something strange happened above Papua New Guinea. A half-ton, couch-sized meteor entered the atmosphere. It caused a bright flash and a bang that was captured on observatory cameras, but nobody really gave it a second thought because these sorts of things tend to happen all the time. However, five years later, Dr. Avi Loeb and his student Amir Siraj saw something different. Instead, they thought that this meteor came from an interstellar destination because of its speed and because of the angle of trajectory that it entered the atmosphere. The speed alone was a strange thing indeed. It was traveling roughly 45 kilometers per second, whereas your average meteor that enters the atmosphere is about 17 kilometers per second. Only comet that come from the Kuiper belt tends to travel this fast. However, the object was far too small and burned far too brightly to be just a piece of ice or a small hunk of a comet. It had to be a tough asteroid, something perhaps comprised of metal, and that would only come from an interstellar destination if it was traveling this fast and collided at this trajectory. However, Dr. Siraj and Dr. Loeb submitted their paper about the subject, and it was rejected by the Astrophysics Journal Letters, which is comprised of the majority of astrophysicists and the scientific community as a whole. However, a couple of years later, as a matter of fact, just a few weeks ago, the U.S. Space Force sent the following to NASA. As you may be aware, Dr. Amir Siraj and Dr. Abraham Loeb of the Department of Astronomy at Harvard University authored a paper titled Discovery of a Meteor of interstellar origin. The paper reported the meteor as originating from an unbound hyperbolic orbit defined as interstellar space hereafter with a 99.999% confidence. This event would predate the discovery of Oumuamua by about three years. Subsequently, Dr. Joel Moser, the chief scientist of Space Operations Command, the United States Space Force Service component of U.S. Space Command, reviewed analysis of additional data data available to the Department of Defense related to this finding. Dr. Moser confirmed that the velocity estimate reported to NASA is sufficiently accurate to indicate an interstellar trajectory. So for perhaps the thousandth time, Dr. Loeb has proven his colleagues wrong when it comes to unusual explanations for phenomena that we see in the night sky. But he didn't stop here, and honestly, I find this to be extremely intriguing. Quote, the interstellar meteor CNELS 2014-0108 appears to be rare both in composition, tougher than all known meteorites, 
flights, including those made of iron, and in speed faster than 95% of nearby stars relative to the sun. Yet, it was the first interstellar meteor detected through the light emitted by its fireball. Similarly, the first interstellar object detected through reflected sunlight appeared anomalous relative to known comets and asteroids. In other words, this meteor bears a great deal of resemblance to a Muamua in terms of its reflectivity and in terms of its unusual composition. And we know where it is. It crashed down somewhere off the coast of Papua New Guinea, and the search area is roughly 10 kilometers in size. Assuming that it's still there, and it would be a bit disturbing to discover that it wasn't, we could use magnetic means to gather up the debris. This would be valuable for lots of different reasons. We're virtually certain that this object was comprised of some kind of metal. Interstellar metal, whether artificial or not, would be intriguing to examine. It would be different than anything else that we have ever examined in the solar system simply because it's traveled between stars. That's a very unusual piece of debris or a meteor or whatever that ended up striking our planet back in 2014. It's something that we should definitely be looking for and the cost of the exploration would be tremendously low compared to the various asteroid probes that we've sent out in the past. However, one might wonder why is it always Dr. Loeb who's making these sorts of observations and publishing these papers? Well, it's because of the intense criticism that people get when they do publish things like this, even if it's just something as innocuous as an interstellar meteor. For example, Chris Lintot, who's a professor of astronomy at the University of Oxford, is still not convinced. Quote, I wasn't hugely impressed by the original arguments, and I don't understand why Loeb thinks U.S. Space Command would know more than, you know, any of the meteor experts who disagreed with him last time around. If Loeb would like to make claims about discoveries, he can publish a paper with the evidence like everyone else. I think he already published that paper, and I think that the U.S. Space Force, and more importantly, NASA, has agreed with his findings. And yet, these criticisms continue to come withering and relentless. That would make any astrophysicist very hesitant to make any sort of bold claims, such as interstellar origins, and especially artificial interstellar origins. So smash that like, hit that subscribe, and if you want to see these bulletins continue to come fast and furious, have a look at the description, not only for videos that have more information that's in-depth about these kinds of subjects, but also ways to support my channel and stay angry about space!